Hey guys, so I finally am sitting down to film the seven deadly sins of beauty tag. I was tagged by a few of my fellow friends on YouTube. Um, I'll link their videos below because um, you should go check, check out their channels because they are some of my very good friends and favorite YouTubers. So um, I have the questions here on my cell phone. I think this was a really different and fun tag. So it definitely did take some thought though, which is why I really like this tag because I feel like some tags are so cheesy, but this one's like really had to, it's like very well thought out. So the um, deadly sin number one is greed. And the question is, what is your most expensive and your uh, most inexpensive beauty items? Um, most inexpensive would be this little um, eyeshadow from Wet n Wild in the color Nutty. And I totally could kick myself that I didn't include this in my Battle of the Topes. Everybody mentioned it to me and I was like, oh my God, how did I forget that one? Um, it's my mo most inexpensive. I think I got it for 99 cents on sale and it's probably one of the prettiest topes. Um, amazing, amazing buy. So this, um, in general, like these little single eyeshadows are amazing quality. So that's my most inexpensive beauty item. As for my most expensive, um, I pulled out two items because I don't really know if one qualifies as a beauty item, but the first one is the Giorgio Armani, Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill. This is in the color number 15, and these are basically pressed pigments, and I think they retail for $35. Um, it's pretty expensive for one single little product of an eyeshadow, but at the same time, totally worth it. A lot of people have said that the L'Oreal Infallible Eyeshadow is an exact dupe for this. I don't own that and so I wouldn't be the best person to ask, but one of my other very good friends on YouTube and somebody's videos that I am addicted to, Amy, she did an amazing comparison of a review between the Armani Eyes to Kill shadows and the L'Oreal Infallible shadows. So I'm going to link her video below. Um, her video is the only one I've seen a comparison and I think it's, um, it, her comparison of like her review of this is dead on. And um, I totally trust her opinion, and I think she gave an amazing review. So I will link her video below, but um, this is definitely probably one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive, um, beauty product. The other thing that I found in my drawer and dusted the dust off, oh, and looking back, I could just cry. This is the Hello Kitty Mirror. It's actually a powder. It's a mystery powder. Um, sheer mystery powder from the Hello Kitty collection, which I swarmed over this entire collection when it was released. I think everyone did. I think this compact cost me $90. <sighs> really, um, I've, I don't think I've ever used the powder inside. It's, it's sheer. Like, what is the point of that? I would have rather like a double mirror. So I literally just kind of kept this in my bag to use as a mirror when in reality, I don't want to blind you, but look how small that mirror is. So I literally paid $90 for this. It is very heavy. Um, obviously has really pretty Swarovski crystal embossing on it, but like, I don't know if you can see up close, there's some, some chipping and some peeling of the paint or whatever. So yeah, this was definitely most ridiculously expensive, most ridiculous product. Um, if it had like the mineralized skin finish powder in this, which I love, then it would totally have been worth it. But I don't use this product. I, I sh strictly just bought this to use as a mirror. And that's ridiculous that I even just admitted that to you. <laughs> Question or deadly sin number two is wrath. What beauty products do you have a love-hate relationship with and what product has been the hardest to get? This was a really easy question for me. The products that I have a love-hate relationship with are pigments and loose shadows. I think that um, loose shadows, mineral shadows, shadows, pigments, specifically bare mineral shadows and MAC pigments are some of, I think, I think produce some of the most gorgeous color eyeshadows I've ever seen. Um, one of my very favorite eyeshadows is Nude Beach by um, Bare Minerals and it's just like a gorgeous color for anybody to wear to just sweep on your eyelids and be good to go. Um, it's so, so, so pretty, but it's a pain in the neck to work with because it's loose, so there's always products spilling, getting everywhere. Um, I feel like I waste product. Um, I have tried pressing pigments in the past, and it was okay, but they would end up, like, 
crumbling and not staying packed and pressed. So I love them because I love the colors that they have and the, and the payoff that they give because they always just look amazing on. But I just wish they would be pressed, but then at the same time, like, I don't think you'd get the same quality and effect in a pressed shadow of this. So, and so I guess why it's love hate. And then for the product that um, was hardest to get, I have four things here. And um, a lot of you guys know back when I started YouTube, I was like all Mac and I just had my blinders on. Um, I became very obsessed with tracking down limited edition items from collections in the past that was BM before Michelle, not bowel move. <laughs> I didn't even think that through. I might have to edit that out. Anyway, it was products released in collections prior to me even knowing what MAC Cosmetics was. It was prior to my makeup obsession and collecting. And so um, I searched blog sales, CCOs, I would call CCOs, um, I think um, live journal, like live journal sales. I went crazy and I would like keep this ongoing list of like these products that I was like set out to find and so for me those four products were number one is definitely the Cult of Cherry Spice Chocolate Quad which is still very near and dear to my heart I still use this quite often I think this is by far the best quad I have ever seen MAC release um, gorgeous and where did I get this I believe I got this off of All Cosmetics Wholesale I think. This was definitely, definitely hard to get my hands on and I think it was just a matter of me biting the bullet and paying the price tag that I paid for this. The other one was the Manish Aurora Eye Palette, which is in the most gorgeous packaging. This is one of those very select collections that was very limited and literally sold out in seconds. It comes in this gorgeous compact. I can be honest and tell you that to this day I've never even used this palette since I've gotten it but I just wanted it simply for the fact of collecting. This and the next product I'm gonna show you are probably the only two products I will keep in my collection forever just for the sheer fact of collecting makeup. I used to collect a lot of makeup, a lot of the limited edition compacts and pretty packaging, but I've gotten over that and I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff and weaned out and just really started to enjoy my collection. But um, even though I will not really use these colors, as you all know, if you know me, these are not colors I would typically wear, I will never part with this palette. Um, no matter how much money somebody offered me for this, no matter how poor I became, I don't know, I would never part with it just because I love this palette. And I think what makes it so special is I bought this on a blog sale for $25. And if you guys can remember, I don't remember how much it actually retailed for, but it was going on eBay for like hundreds of dollars and I just refused to pay that. I think I called CCOs like in California begging them to ship this to me. I had people telling me like they just left their CCO in here and it was there. None of the CCOs would ship it to me. But then one of my um, subscribers sent me a message and said that they found this on a blog sale and it was only $25 and the person I purchased it from used it one time. And like it doesn't even look like it's been used at all. But I didn't care. I just wanted it because it's so gorgeous. Probably the best, prettiest packaging Max ever released. So that's that one. The next one is the Dress Camp Palette from MAC. This was prior to the Manish Aurora, but this was another one of those really select collections where it was just like this and then like two lip glosses or two lipsticks. And it's a really gorgeous palette. And this is definitely a more... Um, a more of a palette that I, I do use and I do get use out of. It's three shadows and a really pretty blush. Um, and just, again, really pretty packaging. And I think I believe I bought this from a blog sale as well. Um, either that or Live Journal. And I think I paid $50 for it, which isn't so bad for like, you know, a really highly sought after product. But um, I would love to know why MAC doesn't release more stuff like this anymore. I feel like they could cut down like 10 collections a year and just focus in on, you know, making a beautiful, gorgeous, unique, one of a kind collection, limited collection where it's like only consists of four items that, you know, if they are highly sought after or whatever. But I feel like I, for one, would much rather, I would more appreciate a collection as beautiful as this than like all these collections that they're just releasing every time I turn around but that's that's for a whole other video rant um, and the last product is the Estee Lauder Modern Mercury highlighter 
I went to about oh, four department stores, called probably 10 of them, and finally found this at a Bloomingdale's. And it was the last one in the store. And um, one of the hardest things I've had to get a hold of, but so worth it. So worth the search. I love this product. Um, Estee Lauder has released a new um, illuminating powder jelly formula um, highlighter in the color Topaz Chameleon, which is the same consistency and concept of this, but it's more of like a bronzy color. I won't be getting it because I, I have other colors like that, but um, if you don't have a lot of highlighters in your collection, I would definitely recommend picking that up because it's just... It's going to give you a highlight like probably no other um, highlighters in your collection will give you. So that was that. And I spent too much time on that question, as I always tend to do. Okay, number three is gluttony. What are your most delicious, delicious beauty products? When I think of the word, like, delicious, I think of, like, ugh, like just all-around class, like, feminine products that make me feel good, products that I get excited to put on, and the first thing that comes to mind is pretty much anything in the sleek black and gold packaging, Chanel. Oh my gosh, anything from Chanel. Um, their lipsticks, like how fun. Just amazing. This is Janelle. It was from a limited edition collection, uh, a color that never gets old. Their blushes, just their compacts in general, and their little like soft pouches that they come in like it's just total luxury this is rose bronze one of my very favorite blushes um you know chanel Bron bronze universal love the smell of it love the product um primarily in the summer but i think chanel in general is just delicious i think the whole brand in and of itself is it's just swoon worthy um so when i yeah, when I read that question, that Chanel was definitely the first thing that came to mind. Sloth, what beauty products do you neglect due to laziness? This is really easy. I rarely ever wear primer. If I do wear primer, it's because I have a sample to use up. I The only full-size primer I've purchased is the Benefit That Gal, um, which is in a bag below me coming up in a products I've used up video. I will not be repurchasing it. I just have never purchased primers other than that. I don't, my skin's not oily. I don't feel like I need a primer to make my makeup last. I've never had an issue with that. So I really don't wear primer. And the other thing would be concealer. Um, I am not really prone, knock on wood, to dark circles under my eyes. So if I use a concealer, it's to probably conceal some kind of blemish on my face and not so much dark circles. And nine times out of ten, I just kind of skip the concealer because I'm lazy and I don't need it unless it's like, you know, I have like Mars or a crater on my face that I'm trying to get rid of. Um, number five is Pride. What beauty product gives you the most self-confidence? That would definitely have to be mascara. I've said this time and time again. If I leave the house with nothing else on my face, you will never see me without mascara or fake lashes or something something. My face could be a whole uneven blotchy mess and I put mascara on and I have no problem leaving the house. I have no problem running into anybody that I haven't seen in years or nothing. I have so much confidence when my, my when my lashes are are done. Um, it totally, I don't know, I just, I feel like it does so much for my eyes and just for people's eyes in general. I'm, I do like the way foundation evens out my skin but I have pretty decent skin and like I said, I would leave the house blotchy and red and pimply before I would leave the house without my lashes done. Um, it, yeah, it's weird. Um, lust, what attributes do you find most attractive in the opposite sex? Who came up with this question and what the heck is it doing in this tag? I don't even know how this relates to beauty products at all. And the last question, number seven is envy what items would you most like to receive as a gift um that's a good question i don't really know um probably just um, i don't know there's nothing really that sticks out in my mind i would say maybe uh a gift card to the chanel counter because that's like my favorite brand. Um, some other people have said perfumes, but I feel like perfume is a very personal thing. And unless people know me really well, it would be hard to gift a perfume to me. Um, so yeah, maybe just like something from Chanel. That's just, when I have an extra couple bucks laying around, <laughs> that's where I go blow it. 
other than that, I would much rather like jewelry or accessories over makeup these days. Um, so that's it. That is the entire tag. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This was longer than this tag should have ran, but um, this was really fun. I like that it got my brain cells working. And um, I encourage anybody that hasn't done this tag already to do it. Leave it as a video response below. If you don't make videos or you're not comfortable with it, leave your seven deadly sins of beauty in the comment section. I would love to read them. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye!